To be a successful salesperson, you have to be highly dedicated and you have to believe what you do first and foremost. Without belief and dedication, you, you really should try something else. Danny Gray Thompson is a gold medalist once again. And if this is to be the very last Paralympic medal she wins, Tani, thanks for Would you please welcome to the stage three of the gold medalists, Tani Gray Thompson, Peter Norfolk and Aileen McGlynn. And actually the, the, the really difficult bit was coming back home and people stopping me in the street and saying, oh, you're Tani Gray. You know, your 800 was really bad, wasn't it? Yeah, thanks, I was there. You, know, you don't need to tell me. But um, Athens was a great experience. It was a lot better organised than we expected. And, um, you know, the team did really well. So that makes it worthwhile. Tani Gray Thompson is moving beautifully. This is a gold medal winning performance from Tani Gray Thompson. Time to introduce you to someone else who is right behind London's bid. And he was in Athens also supporting the British teams. Would you please welcome the Prime Minister, Tony Blair. Hi, Sue. Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. It's a great pleasure to see everyone here this evening. You see, I've got my tie on, but, uh, you know, we're very straight people. I'd like, first of all, to, to say a big word of congratulations to, to everyone here. When people say, did you believe that you could do it, um, after the semi-final, when we all got back on the coach, we really did believe. Um, and I think that was the most amazing thing. We, we believed, but then when we finally had these gold medals in our hand, we were like, I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly, Matt and Darren. You could be so Alcohol does make people drunk and does change their attitudes, so yes, I would class it as a drug. I wouldn't exactly say it was something that killed people. Yeah, yeah, Mr Pettigrew, yeah, but you said it'd be ready today. What, three days to fit a tyre? Yeah, but, no, well, the same to you. What a cowboy. Don't you hate bad customer service? Of course you do, everyone does. In fact, we did a little experiment. We asked 250 Job Centre Plus staff what annoyed them most about customer service. Interestingly, some of the same issues came up over and over again. In this programme, we focus on your top four customer service hates. First off, rudeness. Oi! Rudeness, being ignored, people not listening to you, not smiling. Now, over there is Maria. She's got a very important day. It's not today, but we're going to watch and see what kind of service she gets as she goes to buy that all-important dress. And we're going to watch from in here. See you later. It's not about some children or the most privileged. It's about every child having the best opportunity, the chance to make the most of their potential, to fulfill their talents. That's what our department's about. And in the House of Commons today, I was telling people that's what we're doing and got a pretty good response from the back benches on both sides of the house. So we've got a fair wind and now we've got, a, um, we've got to get on and deliver and do the job and I'm looking forward to it. As a direct result of the many high-profile catastrophes in aviation, the travelling public now more or less accepts the need for stringent security measures while getting ready to fly. It's become a fact of life. Passengers have to queue for a little longer, be searched personally, open their bags more often. It's the extra burden all of us accepts in order to help prevent another Lockerbie. But it is so great to see you. I cannot tell you what a pleasure it is. We know that children perform so much better when they have a hot meal at lunchtime. Here's a thought. Every now and then, have a no salt day. Here, Sam. Let's get rid of the salt, shall we?
appreciate you. So, yeah, thanks for what you're doing here, keeping everyone in order. And you have to listen to their complaints and all that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And the Building Schools for the Future program, the 3,500 secondary schools in England, that Building Schools for the Future program is going to renovate the whole school infrastructure right throughout the country. lots of innovation taking place in schools, in colleges, in universities, and it isn't something new. There's examples of excellent practice, and it's the sharing of that practice. You guys are the most incredible people. You guys are probably the most important people in this country right now, and probably for the next 30 years, as far as making England not the fattest country in Europe. So, good luck. Um, I appreciate everything that you're doing. I know the parents do, and if they don't, they will. Um, and rock on. In these days, we talked about if you like, developing some of the potential of some of the people. I think we now recognize if we're going to be a successful economy and a successful society in the future, the real aim should be to develop all of the potential of all of the people. Chips. 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 I like eating carrots because they help me see in the dark.